Listen, thank you all for coming out and um, participating here. Um, Brett, I can't remember how long ago it was. It wasn't that long ago that we were at this exact site uh, announcing this facility and, and uh, talking about the, uh, the future. And um, the future is here. Uh, over the past few weeks, we have been concentrating on developing uh, plans for a stronger, faster response to an occurrence of Ebola in our state. Uh, and, and for that matter, this concentration on developing a plan has been for any other infectious disease that um, potentially could come into the, the borders of uh, our state and Im impact this country. We've concentrated on increasing our ability to handle a contagious patient, including the creation of a new uh, state-of-the-art facility at University of Texas, uh, UTMB, uh, that medical branch in Galveston, and in North Texas at Methodist Hospital through a partnership with the Methodist Hospital System, UT Southwestern Medical Center, and Parkland Hospital. Each of these facilities will provide world-class care to those stricken by Ebola or some other critical infectious disease while curtailing their future spread through the population. Ultimate goal here is um, effectively protecting the people of the state of Texas. And in turn, um, this country and an extension of that the globe. Here at Texas A&M, some of the top medical researchers and engineers are approaching the same goal from a little different angle. Uh, one I spoke about just a few months ago when we dedicated the site where the new pandemic influenza vaccine facility will stand in just a bit over a year. We're aiming to stop diseases like Ebola through the creation of new therapies and vaccines. It's the culmination of a decade of work, hard work. We piece together the academic, economic, and the physical infrastructure necessary to make possible uh, facilities like the Center for Innovation uh, in Advanced Development and Manufacturing, attract a global pharmaceutical partner like Glaxo Smith Klein to our state. I want to take a moment and just say thanks to the representative. Uh, representative Colcourse was very involved in that process, in that appropriations process over the course of that decade. Uh, and I want to thank you for your vision. I want to thank you for your support. Um, as you all will recall, back in, I believe, 2003, the Texas A&M Institute for Genomic Medicine was created. Um, it was funded in 03. We broke ground in 2006. Uh, the A&M Institute for Preclinical Studies, then the National Center for Therapeutic Manufacturing, where we stand today. Each one of those steps um, had a, they were a part of a foundation. They brought us closer to establishing our state as a national leader in biotechnology and pharmaceutical development. And over the next couple of weeks, researchers here will turn their attention to the rapid manufacture of ZMAP as a promising experimental drug to treat Ebola. Proposals are due to the federal government on November the 10th, and with their green light, they'll be able to begin producing that drug immediately through some very revolutionary new methods and processes. Uh, for me, looking back on this is pretty amazing. We have gone from basically zero at the turn of the century to now being the epicenter 
of creating treatments, vaccines that literally can save hundreds of thousands of lives in pandemic situations. We talked about it in theoretical terms, but now it's a reality. And I want to take a moment and uh, to say thanks to someone who's not here, uh, who actually was the visionary behind our being in this facility today. And I remind people on a regular basis about another extraordinary visionary by the name of George P. Mitchell, who walked on this campus some uh, 70 years ago, who changed the world. And we pitched that term out on a rather maybe too often basis. But George Mitchell changed the world. What he has done with that concept of hydraulic fracturing literally is changing the world. And I will suggest that the visionary who saw this and saw this concept, saw these buildings, saw the potential for Texas A&M, for the state, for the world, is no less a visionary like George P. Mitchell. And that's Dr. Guy Dietrich. Guy was the instigator of the vision who came and worked with me, who daily put this into place, that recruited Dr. Bradjois. And I just want to say publicly, uh, thank you uh, to a great visionary. The facilities already at work here. And even more specialized facilities that are currently being constructed hold the promise of saving millions of lives should a pandemic occur through this rapid manufacture of vitally needed vaccines and treatments. I'm going to let Dr. Drawer kind of give you the expanded version, if you will. Um, we are so blessed in this state that we were able to recruit him, um, a Harvard University of Texas Southwestern educated doctor who understands the potential of what we have created here. As he was an architect of these latter days of this, the project that we've already been approved for with the Center for Therapeutic Medicine and the BARDA was because of Brett Joie. Texas is indeed incredibly blessed to have individuals of his capacity and compassion and passion working with us. Dr. Draw. Thank you, Governor. Representative Colcourse, Governor, we're always honored to welcome you back to Texas A&M. But of course, no one could have predicted the circumstances surrounding this visit. Now is a time of great challenge to our state, to the nation, to the world. But as Aggies have always done, we choose to run towards the fire, not away from it. Without a doubt, my wife Jill and I have embraced Aggie culture and traditions, but we came to College Station from Washington, D.C. without any previous ties to A&M. Why? because this was the only university on the planet, in the only state in the nation, and with the only elected leadership anywhere who could achieve a vision that someday might save millions of lives. Unfortunately, that someday is today. And that someday will occur many times in the future because we live in a global society where an epidemic anywhere is a threat to everywhere. This facility, the National Center for Therapeutics Manufacturing, is nothing less than pioneering in its design and capabilities. It was funded entirely by the state of Texas. 
In 2009, this facility was said by many to be theoretical or maybe heretical. In 2014, Nature, arguably the world's leading scientific journal, concluded that the future of the U.S. government's biodefense strategy sits in a warehouse in rural Texas. You're standing in that warehouse right now. Behind that wall, in collaboration with GSK, a new vaccine to prevent pandemic influenza, like the 1918 flu, is being developed in manufacturing. Behind that same wall, in collaboration with MD Anderson Cancer Center, personalized vaccines against blood cancer are being manufactured and delivered to patients in Houston who need hope and cures. Behind that window, we are mentoring the next generation of scientists and engineers to ensure our nation's biosecurity for the next century. And our capabilities are only possible because of the recruitment of international technical stars made possible by the state's program, like Dr. Bill Reed here, Senior Vice President for Keolon Biotherapeutics, which operates the manufacturing portion of this facility. Dr. Reed is globally admired, and he was formerly Vice President of Sanofi Pasteur, where he led the largest vaccine manufacturing platform in the world. He is personally responsible for saving thousands of lives throughout the globe from the last pandemic. And although he's a diehard Buckeye, uh, he does call Texas home and we call him colleague. In 2012, our Texas A&M team won a rigorous national competition and was selected as only one of three national centers for innovation for vaccines and medical therapeutics to protect the nation against pandemic influenza and also emerging diseases such as Ebola. Our center, with an economic impact to the state of over $42 billion, is maturing around us as we speak. Two new vaccine facilities, almost 7,000 expected new jobs, and the responsibility of protecting our nation against flu and diseases like Ebola. So what's next for us here in our urgent fight against Ebola? First, in partnership with Emory University, the Texas A&M Health Science Center is rapidly advancing a novel new Ebola vaccine that has already proven effective in animal models. We are, right now, under Dr. Reed and uh, Ms. Laura Lee Hughes, beginning to scale up this vaccine for testing in non-human primates and then in human clinical trials. Second, we are partnering with our good colleagues at the University of Texas in Austin to develop new human antibodies based on the serum of Ebola survivors. This partnership is very early, but is extremely promising. And finally, as the governor stated, our team is right now responding to a task order request issued by the U.S. government for the manufacturing of ZMAP perhaps the most promising new therapy for patients suffering with Ebola. In conclusion, I'm sincerely grateful for the opportunities made by the vision and fortitude of our state leaders, like Governor Perry and our Board of Regents, who launched us on this path of innovation and national service. Now back